Vitamin C is a must in the treatment of any cancer type. I'm Dr. Nathan Goodyear, medical director here at Brio Medical in Scottsdale, Arizona. Vitamin C is, is a flagship therapy for the holistic and integrative cancer movement. It's, it's probably the most studied, period, from conventional versus alternative, the most studied anti-cancer therapy, yet it is completely the most misunderstood therapy. And this really goes back to the historical context of a, a debate that broke out in the 1970s to early 1980s. On one side, you had Linus Pauling and his collaborative partner, Ewan Cameron, a surgeon from Scotland, and they used vitamin C in two studies in 1976 and 1978, where they used 10 grams IV vitamin C for 10 days, and then they switched it over to oral. And they, they found a prolongation in the first study of 4.2% 4 it's going to be 4.2 fold of patient survival. And at this 1978 study, they found a 5,400% increase in one year survival, which this was in terminal cancer patients. Simply 10 days of 10 grams IV vitamin C and then switching it over to oral. Now, this was repeated via some authors coming out of Rochester, Mayo, Rochester, Minnesota. And they didn't use the IV route, they only used oral, 1978-1985, and what they found is no, no anti-cancer effects. So a great debate broke out, and that's what science is about, discourse and debate. But yet, both camps here were wrong. What happened is the Rochester May authors won that debate, and for the last 50 years or so, that narrative has been set, but that narrative is false, and it was based on misunderstanding of what's called pharmacokinetics related to vitamin C. And that's how vitamin C gets into the body and how it's distributed through the body, how, it, how its effects are rendered and how it's eliminated. What's interesting is at the time of vitamin C, where the Rochester Mayo uh, authors didn't understand the pharmacokinetics of it, the pharmacokinetics of vancomycin was known, which is if you give vancomycin a very powerful antibiotic orally, it doesn't get throughout the body distributed and affects well, as does the IV. So you give it IV, you have more powerful systemic effects because of the pharmacokinetic difference in the delivery. And yet they misunderstood that as it relates to vitamin C. But yet that set a narrative that was inaccurate for the last 50 years or so. So when you look at vitamin C, the research continued on vitamin C in the treatment of cancer. And it's powerful. But it's important to understand we have to deliver it through the intravenous route. Now, vitamin C can be given orally, and given orally, it is an antioxidative therapy. You will never achieve a pro-oxidative effect from vitamin C, which is what you need to attack cancer by giving it orally. You only achieve approximately 100 to 200 micromolars in the plasma, in the blood. Even liposomal vitamin C taken by mouth will only increase that three to five fold. So max, max, probably three to 400 micromolar. What you need a bare minimum in the plasma, in the blood, is at least 1,000 micromolar or one millimolar. But more studies have said you probably need at least 10,000 micromolar or 10 millimolar. And in fact, when you look at the additional research, we really need that up around 20 to 40 millimolar, and we need to sustain it there. But that can only be achieved with the IV route. So as, I, as I've talked about elsewhere, how melatonin is a hormo hormetic therapy, meaning at different doses it has different effects, vitamin C at low dose is going to be antioxidative, and at high dose it's pro-oxidative. To attack cancer, and how its powerful anti-cancer effects, we need to deliver at high dose IV. And beyond just high dose, beyond just dose, we have to understand that there is frequency of dosing, there's duration of dosing. We have to understand the bioavailability and the pharmacokinetics and the pharmacodynamics of vitamin C. To not just give vitamin C one time, but give vitamin C so that it 
doesn't just achieve plasma therapeutic ascorbic acid levels, which by the way, research has showed us somewhere around 20 to 39 millimolars or 350 to 500 milligrams per deciliter. But we want to take that plasma ascorbic acid into the extracellular fluid, have that oxidize doubly to dehydroscorbate, have that converted to hydrogen peroxide, have that taken up into the tumor microenvironment, into the tumor via the vitamin C itself, ascorbic acid, via the dehydroscorbate, double oxidized metabolite, or via hydrogen peroxide itself, which is prob probably the primary therapeutic effect delivered from vitamin C, and that's via passive diffusion. But all of that has to permeate and penetrate the tumor. But not just that, it has to do that in the tumor microenvironment, but it has to saturate that tumor. And see, it's important to understand that in cancer, hypoxia drives it. There's a high metabolic demand. Cancer is growing very rapidly metabolically, and so it outgrows its vascular supply. So it triggers through all this genetic adaption, uh, this process called angiogenesis. And the, this is an abnormal torturous blood vessel supply growth that really promotes and tries to attempt to meet that high metabolic demand. And so what happens in cancer is it lacks oxygen in many spots, but not in all spots. So you get these hypoxic areas and you get normal oxygen areas, what's called normoxic areas. And so for vitamin C's effect, we have to penetrate the entire, we have to saturate the tumor. And so to do that, we have to follow the science. And the science doesn't just apply to the use and delivery of drugs like I mentioned with vancomycin. That same scientific rigor of pharmacokinetics, Linus Pauling said this, it applies to vitamin C, but because it's a vitamin, ah, you know, we, we don't apply the same scientific rigor. But guess what? When you apply the same scientific rigor to vitamin C, it becomes a very powerful anti-cancer therapy. And to achieve that pro-oxidative effect, that's what we have to do. To achieve that pharmacokinetic effect to deliver the vitamin C, saturate, and destroy it, it takes that proper knowledge and delivery of vitamin C through dosing, through duration, which at a bare minimum is three days a week, because cancer cells hold on to the vitamin C much longer. When you look at plasma, it's gone in two hours in just normal plasma. In healthy liver cells, gone in 16 hours. But studies have actually shown in animals, the cancer cells will hold on to it for up to 48 hours at a significant level. And so vitamin C is held on to cancer cells for much, much longer, 48 hours. So that's where three times a day dosing minimum would come in. But it's also about duration. We have to dose frequent and duration, apply this therapy so that we're saturating this tumor every day. Cancer cell doesn't take time off. And so we can't take time off in the targeting of the tumor and the healing of the body. But vitamin C is a powerful standalone cancer therapy. Vitamin C has very broad omic effects. It can actually work through genomics, through epigenomics, which is above genomics. It's the expression of genomics, transcript transcriptomics, which is all the RNA. You've probably heard a lot of messenger RNA over the last couple of years more than you'd like to hear, but it works through all those different types of RNA molecules. It works in proteomics, which is the collection of proteins. It works through metabolomics, which is probably the big effects of what we're looking at across the board and how we treat cancer in the future. And this is all the metabolites. You can't just look at, at something, is it high or is it low? It's what is the flow of things? What, you know, looking at the Warburg effect is how is sugar flowing in cancer? And how do we change that? And vitamin C works within metabolomics specifically, not just generally, but we know the specifics, but also immunomodulomics, meaning it's working within the immune system. So not only do we work through the omics of vitamin C, but we under, understand the specifics of what, what vitamin C does and how it attacks cancer. It attacks cancer through inhibiting its growth by triggering apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. It attacks hypoxia and turns off hypoxia-inducible factor 1-alpha. It turns off inflammation. 
it turns off actually a key inflammatory signal called nuclear factor kappa beta, which triggers systemic inflammation. Vitamin C turns this off when dosed appropriately. Probably one of the more powerful effects is vitamin C inhib it, it has an immunomodulatory effect. It actually stimulates dendritic cells, natural killer cells, cytotoxic T lymphocytes, but it turns off a lot of immunosuppression. Vitamin C will inhibit how cancer cells will use platelets to spread. That's right, you heard me right. Platelets will surround cancer cells and form a cancer cell platelet aggregate. Vitamin C allows the immune system to penetrate that barrier and destroy those cancer cells. Vitamin C inhibits epithelial to mesenchymal transition and thus metastasis. And again, I've talked about this before, when cancer spreads, that's where 90% of morbidity and mortality associated from cancer comes from. Vitamin C is directly cytotoxic. Vitamin C creates an energy crisis within cancer cells. Vitamin C metabolically changes cancer so that it can no longer follow that Warburg effect. It can no longer use sugar to produce lactic acid. Vitamin C inhibits pyruvate dehydrogenase kinase, upregulates the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, inhibits lactate dehydrogenase, and it forces glucose to pyruvate to acetylcoenzyme A, which by the way also helps the cancer cell produce more melatonin, which counters the cancer cell again, and forces the cancer cell down oxidative phosphorylation metabolic pathways that overwhelm it with oxidative stress and destroy it. And the way it does that is it does it by creating an energy crisis. It does it by creating a detoxification crisis. It actually inhibits, so it actually reduces glutathione. And then it decouples the pentose phosphate pathway from the glycolytic pathway. In the glycolytic pathway, what you have is cancer cells that are growing very rapidly, using sugar very inefficiently, sacrificing efficiency for speed. And to do that, they have to get the, the instruments to, to, to meet that metabolic demand or that cell uh, production. And the pentose phosphate pathway comes in that through electron donation. And it decouples that process. So vitamin C is targeting the tumors in a wide spectrum of ways, but metabolically, it's creating massive disruptions within it. More than that, vitamin C is an antiviral. It's an antiparasitic. It's an antibacterial. It's even been shown to affect positively the treatment of sepsis. That's vitamin C. That's the power of vitamin C. But beyond just a standalone therapy, vitamin C is powerful, and this is the best way to approach a holistic integrative cancer treatment. Vitamin C is best used in combination, in sequence, in stacking with other therapies. Vitamin C with DCA, dichloroacetate, vitamin C with melatonin, vitamin C with hyperbaric oxygen, hy vitamin C with hyperthermia. All of these, using these in sequence, in combination, in stacking, allows vitamin C to really flourish in its anti-cancer effects. And again, that's very important. We have to bring these in combination, in sequence, but, but, but we have to follow the science to guide us there because simply using something in natural and holistic for natural and holistic perspectives is great, but we want to be effective. Uh, holistic therapies are not uh, tiptoe through the tulips. They can be quite aggressive, quite targeted, precise, and they can be associated with making you not feel so good but they can be powerful anti-cancer effects when used properly in sequence and combination and stacking. More than just using it with natural therapies, vitamin C is a significant combination effect with conventional therapies. Now, we are a holistic integrative cancer treatment center here at Scottsdale, Arizona in Brio, at Brio Medical. So we use, instead of maximum to tolerated chemotherapy, we will use low-dose metronomic chemotherapy called IPT, and vitamin C works beautiful in combination with that. But when you look at it from a conventional standpoint, high dose vitamin C pro-oxidatively augments chemotherapy. That's right, you heard me correctly. That's what research is showing. It also restores the sensitivity of cancer cells when chemotherapy resistance has occurred. Vitamin C and combined with doxycycline, a very old antibiotic, attacks cancer stem cells. That's the backup, part, backup copy of cancer cells you want no part of. And when you're dealing with cancer that's spread to bone, 
Vitamin C combined with doxycycline does a beautiful job of penetrating that. Research has actually shown when you combine vitamin C with hyperthermia, you achieve a higher plasma ascorbic acid level, thus ensuring more pro-oxidative delivery to the tumor. Vitamin C combined with radiation, combined and in sequence, promotes an increased pro-oxidative effect. The thought because of that inaccurate uh, conclusion from the Rochester Mayo studies was that vitamin C is antioxidative and so it counters chemotherapy and counters radiation. That's not true. Research is telling us that it's absolutely not true. Vitamin C augments both when dosed pro-oxidatively. The confusion here is the, the concept that vitamin C is either an antioxidant or a pro-oxidant. The answer is yes, it's both. And this is the beauty of it. And this is what you see in these natural hormetic therapies. Cancer cells will take up this pro-oxidative delivery vitamin C and saturate it. It will be pro-oxidative and destroy it. But the healthy cells, they do just fine. They handle it just fine, even at the pro-oxidative levels. The same applies to hyperthermia. The same concept applies to melatonin. This is the beauty of nature's laws and God who created those laws. It's repeated. It's a rinse and repeat pattern throughout the body. Beyond chemo and radiation, vitamin C augments conventional immunotherapeutics. So a lot of your checkpoint inhibitors, your MABs, your MIBs, your targeted therapies, which is all the craze right now in conventional medicine, vitamin C augments them. More than that, Vitamin C should be used with surgery. When you look at surgery as it relates to uh, cancer, every patient going into surgery, researchers show, they're going to be deficient to some degree. Going into surgery, they're going to be deficient in vitamin C. And this extends for months out after surgery. And a large percentage are significantly deficient, 39% significantly deficient at uh, one month and then 21% even out to three months, significantly deficient. And what's important about that is research shows that there's a significant increase in inflammation after surgery. C-reactive protein, IL-6, and this plays a role in how, how surgery can cause receding and recurrence and metastasis. And vitamin C preoperatively, even intraoperatively, and postoperatively is key to counteracting this negative impact of surgery as it relates to potential receding recurrence and metastasis. That's the power of vitamin C. That's the science of vitamin C. A natural holistic, but also an integrative therapy that targets and is a precise therapy to target the tumor and to heal the body. I'm Dr. Nathan Goodyear, Medical Director here at Brio Medical in Scottsdale, Arizona. To learn more about vitamin C therapy, such as what was featured recently on the Dr. Mercola Show, I encourage you to go to our website, check out our blog posts and our videos there, but more, check out our YouTube channel where we post our webinars and in fact our recently post webinar on vitamin C. I hope you enjoy that and I look forward to talking to you soon.